Now I have a repo that lists all of my settings, extensions, and everything else on how I set up VS Code. So I'll link that down in the description. One of the first things is, as I set the font to Anonymous Pro. And then for the theme, I like this theme called Just Black. It's a very high contrast theme with a very dark background. So I really like that. Now you'll notice by default, my setup is very minimal. It's almost like Zen mode where I'm not showing a bunch of extra stuff because I really want to just focus on the code that I'm writing. So let's take a look at my settings.json file and I'm going to kind of point to the settings that create this layout. The first setting here is disabling the status bar visibility. So when the status bar is enabled, it looks like this. It's down here at the bottom. There's a bunch of extra info that I don't really want to see all of the time. So that's why I disable it. Now, um, you can toggle it on whenever you need it, but I don't want to see it all of the time. Next up, I put the sidebar on the right hand side. So if you press control uh, command B, that will open and close the sidebar. And I like mine on the right. So just to show you why, let me create a new file. So command in for a new file. I'm going to save it so I can get some syntax highlighting. And then I'll just do a little console log here. But now when I toggle that sidebar, my code doesn't shift to the right. So if your sidebar is on the left, every time you open and close it, your code just shifts. So that's one of the main reasons I like it on the right hand side. Now I've been using it this way for uh, a few months now and I like it. I, so far I haven't run into any issues. So yeah, I definitely prefer it on the right. Uh, next up, you'll notice that my tab bar is not visible, but if you press control tab, that will show you all of your open files. So that's why I don't have it visible. So right here I have editor show tabs none. That way it's not taking up a bunch of extra space in the vertical as well. And if I need to switch to a file, I'll just press control tab and then pick the file that I want. The next really useful setting is snippet suggestions. And I have that set to top. So if I'm in a JavaScript file and for instance, I want to do a console log, I can just type log and then tab and that inserts the console log snippet. And you'll notice that that snippet option is right at the top of that, that suggestions list. But if we disable this, now, if you go to do a snippet expansion, it's not at the top. And so you have to like arrow down to get to it. So that's a really useful setting. So that way you don't have to arrow down to get to those snippets that you're using very often. Another setting I have is I disable the mini map. So the mini map is this here that kind of like shows you your code overview at a glance. I, I don't find it very useful every now and then I might need it if I'm, I'm in like a really big file, but by default, I disable it. So it's not taking up any extra space. Now, another useful setting is linked editing, and you'll see this in an HTML file. So let me create one really quick. And let's say we have a tag. So I'm going to create a little h1 that says hello world like this. Now, notice as I navigate around, whenever my cursor is on an opening tag, the closing tag also highlights. So that's one key benefit. Another thing is if I start to edit the opening tag, the closing tag automatically updates. So that's super useful, especially like, you know, if you're renaming tags or kind of like moving things around um, and it's just built into VS code. So you don't need an extra extension for this. You can just set this to true. Next up, I'm going to run through some of my most used extensions here in VS code. Now I use a lot of extensions. If you visit this Git repo, you can see the full list. I'm just going to highlight some of the ones that I use most often. And the first one is font size shortcuts. So I present my code a lot and I want to be able to increase and decrease the size of my font without increasing and decreasing the size of the editor. So by default in VS Code, if you don't have this extension, whenever you press Command Plus or Command Minus, it zooms in and out the entire user interface. And a lot of times you don't want that because then it'll just like make your, si your uh, sidebar really huge. So with this extension, now whenever your code is highlighted, the Command Plus and Command Minus shortcuts only affect your code. Next up is Prettier. Now, if I'm working in an established project, it probably already has a prettier RC, but sometimes I'm working on just like one-off files and I want to be able to format them. So the prettier extension is great for that. So for instance, this project doesn't have a prettier RC, but I can press option shift F and that will just run prettier on this file. So this is really great if you like you paste some JSON data and you need to format it or some XML data or something like that. Another extension I really like is code spell checker. So this is great if you make a lot of typos like me and if you have a misspelling, uh, right inside of your editor, you can press command period, and that will bring up all of the suggestions to fix it. So super useful. This next extension is a must if you work with TypeScript and it's called pretty TypeScript errors. So if you're in a TypeScript file and you come across some type error, usually it's just a whole lot to parse and a whole lot to figure out, but pretty TypeScript errors, makes it much more readable and kind of allows you to pinpoint the exact error more easily. So once we enable this extension, now when I hover over, you'll notice that instead of just this blob of text, we have a nice readable and also syntax highlighted 
uh, error message that gives me a much better idea of how to fix this type error. This next extension is for making HTTP requests inside of VS Code. Now, you might be used to using a separate tool like Insomnia or Postman, but it's really nice to have this built right in in the sidebar here. So I can press Command Shift R, that opens up Thunder Client, and then I can create new requests. You can also see your history of requests. So if I click on these, then that'll automatically load up the body and the headers or anything else that I had set. It's right there in my history. And it works just like those other tools. So you can send these requests, you can change the HTTP method, all that good stuff. Um, and then another extension that works really well in conjunction with this, especially if you're in a TypeScript project, is paste JSON as code. So let's say I made this API request, which gives me back some Pokemon data, and I want to create a TypeScript type from this data. I can just copy that data, and then over here in my TypeScript codes, we can generate a type. So if you press Command Shift P, search for paste JSON as code, give it a top level name. In this case, it's a Pokemon. This will then generate a TypeScript type using that JSON data. So this is super useful, especially if you're just like using fetch in your codes and you want to get some good type completion, you can generate the type and then just import it in. That's it for the extensions I use the most. Uh, the rest of these extensions are specific to languages and frameworks. So depending on what you do in your day-to-day -day job, you may or may not get some use out of these. But XML tools is really great if you work with XML and you need to format it or if you're working like with configuration files that are XML. Tailwind is essential, their, their extension is, if you work with Tailwind daily. It gives you really good editor support. You can hover over the Tailwind classes and it'll show you exactly the CSS that's being applied. Also, if you're working in React, there is an extension that gives you a bunch of snippets. And depending on the type of styling solution you're using in your React projects, there are a set of extensions that will give you much better editor support. If you're working in Vue, Volar is the way to go. There's the Svelte extension if you're working in Svelte or SvelteKit. The Prism extension is great for giving you auto formatting, syntax highlighting, and autocomplete. And then the H HTMX extension is great to also give you some autocomplete on those HTMX tabs. So these are all these extensions. If you have any suggestions for things that I missed and that I might like to use, definitely let us know down in the comments. And if you found any use out of the ones that I mentioned, let us know as well.